Welcome back to another week of Netball Zone. Southern Steel and England Roses shooter George Fisher joins us live in studio. We listen to Mila Rurelli Buchanan singing chops on our favourite segment, E! News. And we hear how Michaela sokolich beatson is embracing the challenge of being Mystic's newest captain. All tonight on Netball Zone. Tēnā koutou katoa no mai haere mai to another episode of Netball Zone. Ko Courtney Aho, ko Cruz Tene, ko George Fisher Tena. Kia ora to you both, but George, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> It's great to see you, George. I know you're still sort of uh, coming back. We're trying to rehab from injury. We'll talk about uh, that later in the show. But let's look at injuries uh, so far. Of course, there were a few that happened right throughout the ANZ Premiership uh, this weekend. We saw a few in the Pulse game. Amelia Wormsley, shocking herself, thinking she hit her head, but I don't think she did in that game. But great to see her back up and running after that. Also, Maddie Gordon as well, rolling her ankle. And we hear that she's in a moon boot, uh, Coco. So fingers crossed she can recover quickly from that. And if we come to the game on Monday night between the Mystics and the Tactics, Grace Wicky went off with an injury. And we also saw Tapaya Sabi Ricketts suffering a, a leg injury as well. So not good signs for the third round of the ANZ Premiership. No, and all big names and you hope they bounce back quickly. Maddie Gordon is one of those players who we see usually bounce back straight up if she hits the ground, but uh, she actually went off the court. George, your thoughts on the ANZ Premiership so far? I think it's been really interesting, actually. I think, yeah, definitely like highlighting a couple of the injuries at the moment. I think there was a big gap if you didn't make international, so a couple of niggles like sliding in there. But no, I think it's been good. I think the games have been really competitive, which I don't think you always saw as much last season. So no, I think it's been going good. One of your teammates, uh, Kate Heffernan, she was presented with the Sandra Edge Trophy on the weekend when they were down in Wellington. Uh, she won it for the Silver Ferns Player of the Year last year. But what's Kate like as a person, but also as a player, as a teammate? I absolutely love Kate Heff. I think she's so awesome on and off the court. Like, off court wise, she's just a bundle of fun. Like, you definitely get that split of real professional, like, takes that leader role and obviously captain and stuff. But then you also do get that fun in games, like, can have a laugh. And on court, I think she's absolutely tearing it up. Like, the way she takes ball and also coming on as a leader, like, she's only young still. What is she, like, 24, 25? <laughs> she's a child. No. <laughs> she no, she's, yeah, mean, real good. Yeah, no, it's great to have been able to watch her grow, but another player that we've loved watching grow is Holly Fowler, one of the most resilient in the ANZ Premiership, and she celebrated her 100th game on the weekend. Holly Fowler, stand up. And that is a beautiful intercept. Well, bad luck on the result, Holly. You couldn't get there. It was an incredibly messy game. Would you have wanted a better one for your 100th? Uh, look, you could say yes, but I'm just so incredibly proud to be playing my 100th with this group of girls. It's not the result that we wanted, but I do think there has been a bit of growth um, from last week to this week, so that's really nice. There's clearly a bond between you and Maya Wilson. Tell us about that. Yes, I have played with Maya since I was about 14 years old, so we've played a lot of netball, done all our school netball, age groups netball, and now ANZ Premiership netball together, so it's pretty cool. And so where are your hopes for this year? What do you want to achieve this year? This year, look, I think a win on the board, for starters, would be great for our team. Um, personally, would love to get in that black dress, but at this stage, we're just taking it week by week with the stars. And what about next week? You've got another big game. We do indeed. So it's back to the drawing board for us and take some learnings to get that win next week. Well, we shall look forward to seeing you out there. 101 games, outstanding. Thank you. Whakanuiki a koe, Holly, congratulations on that one. But as we heard the stars, they're looking for their first win. They lost to the Magic on the weekend. Cruz, you were there. I was, and it was a tough game for both teams. I think we counted 53 turnovers uh, right throughout the match. And I think that just came down to the desperation that both of these teams really wanted to, uh, to win. They were winless after three, uh, sorry, two rounds of the ANZ Premiership. And you could see it in some of the play. There were errors, soft turnovers, but also some really good uh, display of talent out on court. But yeah, I think for the Magic, they'll take a huge amount of confidence away from that win um, in Takanini. But don't count out the Steel. They'll definitely come back. They've got a big game against the Steel this weekend, so I'm sure they'll be, uh, they'll be out there trying to win. Impressive from the Magic, though, Cruz was their defensive end. I like what they put out on court on the weekend. But um, they also had some second-half woes, too. 
They did, and I think uh, from the start of this uh, season, they haven't won a second half um, of any game that they've played so far. So that is a big concern for the Magic. However, the defensive end this weekend against the Stars was absolutely outstanding. Nine intercepts in total, seven for the defensive end. Georgia Takarangi getting this winning intercept for the Magic. So great to see her just continue to uh, continue the form that she's uh, put out so far in the ANZ Premiership. Yeah, I really like uh, watching her so far this season. All right, game two was the Pulse at home to the Steel. I'll tell you what, George, the Steel, they started so well. Your thoughts on this game? Were you maybe yelling at your TV screen? I'm not sure. I was literally, not that I can jump, but I was literally jumping with them. I felt every kind of like take and turnover and stuff. We had an amazing first half. I think we went into the second half uh, two or three goals up. I think uh, the, we kind of lost the ability to just let go of the ball freely. And I think we're like, oh my gosh, we're actually up. And it's been a long time. <laughs> Sadly, since we felt that, and I think then we held on to ball a little bit, got a little bit sticky fingered, and um, yeah, probably didn't play as well as we did in the first half. But I think it's something to build on. Like, as we said, haven't won in a while. Like, we almost need to relearn how to win. We were like in touching distance with the Poles. I believe in touching distance with the Mystics. So it's coming. It's in the, it's in the pipeline. I agree. It is coming. A player that was outstanding for the Poles was Kelly Jackson. But I want to talk about your steel shooters because they were doing some lovely shooter to shooter. It was only the second half, I think, that Kelly really came into this match. Yeah, no, definitely. At the end of the day, Kelly is a, an amazing player. She's a tall girl. I think we obviously don't have that height in there at the moment, which is fine. We've been using our bodies so well. I'll shoot, as you said, shoot it to shoot a ball. Um, and actually, like Grace, I think, came off the Mystics with 100% shooting stats. So it's definitely there and it's definitely coming. But uh, yeah, some of them combinations just need solidifying and like finding each other through them sort of big bodies. So yeah, it's coming. Perhaps <laughs> this weekend, uh, Cruiser at the Tactics and the Mystics, what a thrilling game. Probably the match of the round. It was, and it was a great match to end round three of the uh, Premiership. Uh, it really was a game of two halves. I feel like the Mystics really had it going in that first uh, half. They won it uh, quite convincingly up by four goals going into the second half, but the tactics, that change that they made with Greer Sinclair in at centre, I think was a turning point for the tactics. They were letting the ball go, that space opened up, the feeds going into their shooters was fantastic as well. And the defense, the intensity in the defence really picked up. I mean, Jane Watson, she came out with some spiky intercepts, so great for the tactics, I guess, and probably going back to the drawing board for the Mystics and just sort of correcting those errors. But one person for the tactics, Coco, that was fantastic, and she has been stepping up time and time again, Ellie Bird, I thought she offered some really good service down that shooting in for the tactics. Yeah, I agree. She was a strong target for the tactics. And as you said, I love watching those long feeds go in. Uh, Tuhunga Reo, assistant coach, was loving it on the sideline. But, George, what do you like about Ellie Bird's game? I like that she kind of um, has gone from A and Z and come back again. And I actually think she's like come back all refreshed and like her game looks slightly different, which is quite cool. She holds really well. She's really tall and she's just safe hands. You know what she's going to do. She's going to hold. She's going to get the ball, turn and shoot. And sometimes you just need that security back there. Maybe it's her time over in England, uh, George, that <laughs> made her a better player. However, it is a new episode of Cruise Control and tonight is over a third. Hello and welcome to a new season of Cruise Control, a segment where we teach you tips, tricks and rules of netball. Today we will be looking at the rule over a third. For example, if a player has the ball in the goal third and want to pass it to another player moving through the court but miss the centre third, the umpire will call over a third and possession will be given to the other team. No, my hooky, my to netball zone time now to chat with our Manuhiri, our guest, George Fisher. George, how are you? How's the injury? What's the update, please? Um, I'm okay. Personally, I'm fine. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> as fine as I've ever been, but no, my knee's just a little bit up and down, so I ended up having a second surgery back in the UK. So I've lost my cartilage now, um, which was what they kind of took. So we're just kind of working out how the knee's going to go. Like my bones are kind of taking that now. So when you don't have any cartilage, you don't kind of have that squidgy like buffer. So we're just trying to load it and work it out. And we've literally tried everything, I think, in the book. And we've finally kind of got like a good um, sort of 
like rehab program, I guess, which is quite interesting. It's like not traditional lifting. It's more like yoga and reformery. Oh, I love this for you. It's fantastic. I did tell everyone, I was like, I just can't lift weights. It's not for me. And they were like, you can. Turns out I can't. I actually there can't. You go. <laughs> but yeah, no, so it's going well. So we're starting to build and run on the Ultra G. So oh, yes. some good stuff. Well, George, you are ruled out for the rest of the season, unfortunately. But I mean, mentally, how is rehab going? Because I know, you know, when you don't have a sort of end goal in sight of when you return to the court, it can be quite tough. But how's it going for you? Yeah, as you said, it is really tough. I think um, people don't really. I don't know, people don't really understand how tough it can be. It's kind of like, oh, well, just be fine. But it's the little things, I guess, that you miss, like the team, like camaraderie, like you don't get to be with them as much. And like, it's such a huge part of your life for such a long time. So I think with my rehab, it's not about like motivation. It's more the dedication. Like I don't want to do it, but I know I have to. Whereas like, I guess that side of things, you just like, grind out whereas I miss being part of the team and kind of like I see girls like when I see the girls do something on court I'm literally like cringe like oh my gosh like instant sweats so yeah no <laughs> definitely hard really hard actually harder than I gave it credit for last year mm. so I'm just hoping that we get back on there at some point at this at this stage but yeah it'll be all right well speaking of your team how have you enjoyed your time at the still I can hear a little Invercargill twang in your accent now George the R's. <laughs> I like roll my R's and um, but no, I've, I've honestly loved my time down at the still. I feel like I've been taken in with open arms since the day I got there and that's never changed. Like obviously I have been injured, but people have obviously been super supportive and just super, super friendly and nice. And like I've genuinely got like made some, I would say lifelong friends. They don't have much of a choice now. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I've loved it down there. It's awesome. Learned heaps, grown heaps. Well, every game day, Georgia, at home, you are sitting on the sideline. Now, I do have to ask you, how tough is that? Because you just mentioned before, you're cringing when you see things happen out on court. You must just want to get out there and play some netball. I really do. Sometimes I'm watching the game and I'm like, oh, this is what I would do, or this is what I think I could do this and stuff. So, yeah, it is really tough watching, I think, as well, because, like, we haven't obviously been winning. We're definitely close. We definitely get in there. But sometimes you want to get on there and like, I definitely like when I do coaching myself and I'm like watching some of my like younger girls play. I want to go and play with them. And I'm like, this is what I want you to do, or this is what I think could happen. So no, it's definitely tough watching. But I, I'm like loving the girls. Like Grace is awesome. She like dropped me a message the other day and was like, let's like sit down and go for this. And I'm like, yes, I'm the biggest netball nerd ever. Let's sit and nerd out. So yeah, definitely hard. But um, I still feel very much part of it with the girls. And then aspirations, I guess, to still play for the Roses because it was great to see you out there in the red dress as much as it probably hurts us. <laughs> but I thought it was so well deserved. Uh, you had outstanding seasons in the ANZ Premiership. But for you being part of the Roses and hopefully getting back there? Uh, yeah, it's been a long, long time since I've played for the Roses. I think coming up for like, what, nearly three years by the time I could potentially play, which is crazy to think about but yeah it's definitely an aspiration to get back on court and kind of like you obviously want to represent your country it's like the top you can get to and that's obviously I feel like what any athlete wants to do you don't play sport not to try and make it to the top well I don't anyway I'm sorry about that but yeah no it'd be awesome to try and get back out there and run around with the girls and actually just train for like one week <laughs> a whole week running around I'm like oh, amazing well we would love to see you back out there too uh, in honor of netball New Zealand celebrating 100 years of netball in Aotearoa we have our centenary dream team competition scan the QR code on the screen to enter pick your top seven players one dream coach and one ultimate dream player to be in to win a $100 voucher from the coffee club and tickets to the ANZ Premiership Grand Final. This week winner is Marie Claire McDonald. Congratulations, Marie Claire. You have won a $100 Coffee Club voucher. Here's her centenary dream team. Cruz, your thoughts. George, your thoughts. No, oh, I love this team. <laughs> I'm waiting to see Coco Tardy up there. <laughs> oh, my no. no, no, sure. no. <laughs> but George, your thoughts, especially that defensive end. It must be a pretty tough to, uh, defensive end to play against. I mean, it's not a defensive end that I would be absolutely jumping it to play against, <laughs> but I mean, just for the claim to fame, I'd like to play against it. Like, yeah, I did that, but no, amazing team up there. Great choices, I'd say. Some of the greats. Yeah. Some of the greats, that's right. Some of our great Silver Ferns ever. Uh, Silver Fern 169. She's stepping into a new role this year as a captain of the Mystics. The dominant team all season has dominated the final. The Mystics, ANZ Premiership champions for 2023. Oh, last year, yeah, finishing with the win was just unreal.
can't actually put into words how we felt. It was just like we'd worked so hard all year, we knew that that was our goal, and to actually achieve it was awesome. I am the captain now, and I actually take that really seriously. For me, it's so much more than doing a coin toss and, you know, talking to the girls. I do a lot of work behind the scenes to upskill and be the best that I can be, not just for me, but for my team, because I know that they deserve that. And we have a really experienced team. Like, if you look across Mystics, like, Taylor and Grace have been in the team this, I think, their sixth or seventh year now. And they're still, like, in the younger group, which is crazy to think. Then you've got people like Phoenix, who's this amazing leader within her own right. Peter's the same. So leading a group of very experienced people comes with its privileges, but also it challenges, because how do we work together without leadership? Um, but yeah, I'm very honoured to be in this role. Oh, Michaela oh, Summers yeah. beats it. What a win. The type of leader I think I am, I've been doing a lot of work on that, because that's important, right? If you know who you are and what you stand for, it's very easy to lead. Um, so I'm still trying to come to grips with kind of a term for it. The main thing is at trainings, I just be me, which is someone who's very loud, who's very animated, who demands excellence from everyone at all times. Then off court, I'm a little bit silly and I try really hard to keep that part of me and not be like this serious person all the time because I don't need to be. And just, yeah, finding that balance. Phoenix and Peter are who I go to probably the most. And again, they're not the type of people who are just gonna agree with what I'm saying. They'll challenge me in things and I'll challenge back and we can have these amazing conversations that are for the better of our team. Everyone has this desire to go back to back. It's gonna be hard though, but the teams this year are very, very good and we know that. So if we set a goal, man, we gotta grind to it and we're not afraid to hold each other accountable to that. So I keep, for us, just keeping on those things. And me personally, I just wanna play good. Um, and I know I can, it's just a matter of week to week doing my job and sticking to my job. You gotta feel that beat oh. in a week and a while to forget. Yeah. We have the highly requested, so the much. only wanted on Thank E! You. News. Mila, Mila Ruwalu, oh. New Cannon. Oh. Oh. We'll start with spill the tea with Auntie E because last year you gave us the tea about Maya. Oh, Maya's looking for <laughs> Maya's looking for a man! You were literally Cupid. Yeah. Like not long after, totally. this was taken. So I what's know. the tea this year? We are experiencing a lot of adversity in the team. You are. Players in and out. So the tea is you don't know who's gonna come next weekend or the week after or the week after that. So do you, do you, can you give us who might who might come? Like I don't know. Is Tima Pata on the call up list? I don't know. A B C D E F Oh E. G. <laughs> oh, I like two it. And two together. So, Auntie's idol, I'm gonna give you a word. Okay. You can sing me any song you want. Oh my god, yes! Okay, ready? Okay. The first one is love. Love. Never knew what I was missing, but I knew once we start kissing, I thought ah, 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 you do pussy caressy. Stop it! Shout out to the man. What's wrong with the world, mama? People living like they ain't got no mamas in the USA, the big CIA. The Bloods and the Crips and the KKKs. Nice. That's enough. The Hurricanes. Up. Yeah, up the Canes. Up the Canes. I'm okay with that. But Chiefs as well. Um, okay, the next one. The next word yep. is baby. All right. Um, Bring the beat in. It's hard, isn't it? Baby, it's you. Oh. You're the one I love. You're the one I need. The only one I see. Come on, baby, it's you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Last one is girl. OK. Go. Go. Girl, close your eyes. Let the rhythm get into you. Don't try to hide it. There ain't nothing that you won't do. Ah, ah. I know this the Relax dance. your mind. Sit back and move tonight. You gotta feel that beat. In a week and a while to forget. Share that beat alone. I actually love Woo. you. Fano, that's the one, the only, the greatest, 
If you all wanted her, she's here. I'm here now. Yeah. You're lucky because I didn't want to be here because I'm not in a good mood because we lost. That's right. But anyway, I like E, so anything for you guys. Thank you. There you go, Fano. E News with the best. Thank you. Peace out. Oh, she's so good, isn't she? Both of them. Oh, I love it. George, are you a singer? Can we get you to do that one day? I mean, if you want to be deafened by my oh. <laughs> OK, never mind. Well, someone who knows Edna very well is uh, Sam, Sammy Winders, I would say Sam Sinclair. Uh, and she's live with us from Sydney. Sammy, thank you so much for joining us. How is Sydney? I should say, g'day, mate. How's Sydney? No, I have missed, I bring so much um, Kiwi slang into the Giants, so I've missed it, so so stoked to be here. Um, but no, Sydney's going well, uh, so far so good, despite the fact we haven't had a win, we're still on, I'm still on that elusive win, um, but I have enjoyed my time, it's just been such an experience and very different, very challenging, but lots of fun. Sammy, I'm going to try my Australian accent for this question, but um, you suited up in the orange uh, this season. How's that going for you playing at the Giants? <laughs> oh, good, Chris. Um, it's been good. I have enjoyed working with new people across the court, but also working with a few people I've played with before, um, and that's been really fun. Um, also refreshing because Jamie, for example, has just grown so much since I last played with her. So that's been really fun. And Joe has chilled out a little bit since we last played with her, Cordo. I don't um, believe that. In some ways. <laughs> in some ways. I still got yelled at today, for example, at training. Oh, but like otherwise, it's um, been really fun. And yeah, it's um, different as I guess the biggest word I could say. Um, coming over here. Same game, different structure, I guess. I mean, do you miss us then, Sammy? Is that what you're trying to say? There's a lot of things I miss about New Zealand. Um, I was out yesterday with Joe, my husband, who's moved over here with me finally. But we were just biking around and all he was saying was, I miss Jimmy's pies. So there's definitely that aspect of it. And apparently Australians don't have bakeries. So we really miss that. Um, but yeah, definitely parts of it, but I'm also throwing myself into the environment. So, you know, totally embracing the whole thing. Yeah, the bakeries aren't good there. Look, Joe's still angry, Jamie's growing. How's Julie Fitzgerald? How's it all going over there? Yeah, Jules is great. Um, she still makes us run probably about half an hour of agilities before we start the training. So that's really <laughs> tough for everybody. Um, but she's good. She bounces off the leaders in the team like really well I think and so Joe obviously has quite a quite a big voice um as does Jamie at times which is so awesome to see her step into that leadership role but yeah I just think Julie's created a really cool environment and being part of the GWS Giants AFL setup in terms of using their facilities and being in their gym is just next level like nothing like it in New Zealand and that's so cool yeah, I agree. It's amazing to see you over there, Sammy. We wish you all the very best for the rest of the season. Tell everyone we said hi from Aotearoa. I will. Thanks Bye, Sammy. <laughs> oh, so good to see you, Sammy. Right, we've got round four of the ANZ Premiership. George, how do the Steel get their first win against the Stars? I think it's just building. I think if we get in our first quarter and we get a nice... One or two, just holding it. We just need to hold it. And I think this week at training, just learning to win, sort of like holding on to it and then building, I guess. I think as well, it'd be good to look at our lines and see what we're kind of running against them. I, they're, they're going for their first win. We're going for our first win. It's going to be head to head. It's going to be hard. Also, the fortress that is the ILT Stadium, always tough to be an outsider coming down there, honestly. <laughs> so yeah, and I think the last game was that maybe sell out. Well, it was really very busy, if not so. Good luck, stars. <laughs> Good luck, stars. Good luck to the Steel and the rest of the teams are playing this weekend. Thank you guys so much. Make sure you tune in every Wednesday night for Netball Zone and we'll see you next week.